Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Belial from Arcadia Quest Inferno by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 6 in this Arcadia Quest Inferno painting series. And today we're painting Belial. He's one of the medium sized minions that you'll face in this competitive dungeon crawl style game. Now I've got some mixed feelings about how Belial ended up. There's a couple of things that I liked and a couple of things that I think I could have done differently. Um, some of the things that I liked were the armour. Um, I think I got did pretty well to get a good uh, worn and damaged look to it. And the eye on that staff sort of thing that he's got with those spikes coming out of it, I think I got some pretty good effects on there. But where I think I went a little bit wrong was with the red that I chose for the base coat. So I used Magma Red for the base coat and I used that because when I did the Demon S's, I think it was, I used Magma Red for them, and that was fine for highlighting and shading. But the reason that I think Magma Red was the wrong one to go with was because it's pretty much my brightest red, and when starting with a bright color, there's just not really any room to go for when highlighting. So with the Underlord, which was the one that I did in the previous video, who's the big dude sitting on the throne, I used um, heraldic red, which is one of my mid-range reds, and what that meant is that when it came to highlighting and shading, I had the room to go down for shading, but I also had lots of room to come back up with highlighting. And with the Underlord, my final highlighting was with magma red, I think it was magma red and a, with a little bit of orange in there just to brighten it a little bit more, but pretty much my final highlight was magma red, yet that's what I started with with this guy. And I think the reason why I started with, it, with him was because of when I did the demonesses, but it was fine for them because they're quite small. Um, there wasn't a lot of highlighting to actually be done, and so the fact that I couldn't brighten it too much wasn't really an issue. Whereas this guy, he's quite a bit bigger, even though he's one of the medium-sized ones, he's quite a bit bigger than the demonesses. And so when it came to highlighting, there were much bigger um, sections to highlight with sharper details, like especially on his face and some, some spots like that. And so I just wasn't able to push the contrast enough and build the depth of colour that I was after. So, um, yeah, just, it, it ends up not, like it doesn't really look flat, but it looks flatter than what I wanted it to. And that's just because from the base coat to my final highlight, I just didn't have the range to be able to, um, to go to, to get that contrast. Now, the other thing was that, um, when I'm, as I'm shading here with the clotted red, this is the same red that I shaded the Underlord with. And I think it was fine again with the Underlord because I started with a deeper red as my base coat. When I then used clotted red, they were cl colors that were closer together. And so I was able to get better blends there. Um, but using clotted red to shade magma red there was probably too much of a difference between them um and i i wasn't able to get the the blends with belial as i was with um with the underlord so yeah going both ways shading and highlighting starting with magma red was not the best place to to start um because you can see that i'm I'm now highlighting here back with the magma red. It's building the opacity from from the base coat, so it does it does highlight. But um, yeah, if I started with heraldic red like I did with the underlord, I would have still had that room to go down for the shading, and it probably would have worked better because I could have stuck with the clotted red and had less difference between the colours, which would have helped with the blends. Um, but then it would have been much much better for highlighting because it would have given me more room to to highlight up. Um, and I could have finished off with Magma Red or like I do Magma Red with a little bit of orange um, and yeah, just that contrast would have been there. So yeah, that's the main thing getting to the end that I looked back and thought, yeah, that's where I went wrong. Um, 
but you know, live and learn. So next time, um, I'll, I'll start with that more mid-range tone. But like I said, there are other parts that I was really happy with. So, you know, take the good with the bad. So one thing that was a little bit of a surprise that worked in my advantage, and it was a surprise because when I've done this in the past, it hasn't worked in this way, was by using the airbrush to base coat, um, the tones from the Zenithal Prime really came through. Now, I don't know if, as I started um, to do my shading and highlighting there, if it came through on your end, but definitely as I was holding the mini, because I had, um, black from the prime within all of the shadows, then that transitioned into gray and then finished with white right on top where the highest concentration of light would be. As I was then um, base coating with the airbrush, because it goes on quite thin, those tones came through. And so um, even though it was all base coated in the magma red, it was brighter on top and darker on the bottom. And so that gave, yeah, just natural shading. And then when I came to doing my highlighting and shading, I already had that sort of working with me um, to, to sort of help a little bit. Um, I have um, base coated with my airbrush in the past, not a lot. Um, I The most recent time that I did it was when I did the airships and the mechs from Scythe for a couple of the factions. Um, and I tried to, um, get that transition from the shadows to the highlights, um, or at least the start of them with my airbrush, but it didn't come through as much. I don't know if that was because I was um, just starting off and working with maybe thicker paints or something like that. But yeah, those tones didn't come through nearly as much as what happened here. But um, yeah, so that worked really, really well. So that's definitely something that I'll be thinking about in the future, um, so even if it's a mini that I might necessarily need to airbrush in terms of like how much of a single colour there is, like obviously with this guy being lots of red, that's why I airbrushed with him, um, but at least yeah, knowing that if I sort of put the paint on a bit thin, those tones are going to come through, um, I might end up, end up airbrushing um, something that I might not have purely because of the amount that it, that it needed to be done. But yeah, so that worked that worked well. Um, it was something that worked to my advantage, um, just having that um, those tones from the prime come through and it just made him brighter on top than what it did um, on the bottom. I'm definitely thinking of, you know, if I'm gonna be doing like some speed painting or something like that, um, that'd, that'd be a good thing to do to, to save a bit of time on highlighting and shading. So the armor here that I'm painting at the moment, like I said earlier, is one of the areas that I was happy with. And you can see here, I'm starting with, um, uh, so my silver metallic paint with just a little bit of black in it. Um, so it always needs to be just a little bit because black is very, very, uh, very, very overpowering. But I've only darkened it off a bit. Um, and I think the reason why this sort of works well, and it's a very, very basic thing to do, but it's just because I knew what I was going to do with it in the in the next couple of steps and where I wanted it to end up. Because what I do is I just put a simple black wash over the top because there is texture, especially with the um, that armor that's on his back. It is quite textured. And so the black wash will help that to come out. But um, the black wash will also just overall darken it. Um, so if I started off with it too dark, then putting the black wash over the top would then darken it to a point that I didn't want it to go to. So because I was, I, I knew what I was going to do with it, um, I could then start with it lighter than what I wanted it to finish off with, then put the black wash over the top and that brings it down to where I want it to be, but also falls into all of those recesses. So yeah, for anyone that's experienced, that'll be something that you naturally do. Um, but if you're starting out, Always good to know where you want it to end up. Think about the steps that you need to go, you're going to need to go through to get it to the point that you want it to end up with, or end up at, sorry. Um, and then just backtrack from there and go, right, so this is where it'll need to start. This is how bright or dark it'll need to be at the start um, to end up at that point. So yeah, so knowing that I was going to put the black wash over the top, which was going to darken it, meant I started being lighter than where I wanted it to finish.
Um, just while I'm sitting here just watching myself paint these little sections here like this, it just sort of has reminded me of something that I have mentioned a few times in the past, and just the way that painting all these little bits like those horns that are sticking out and the armour and the hair and all that sort of stuff just helps to break up those bigger slabs of colour, which adds some extra visual interest to a mini, but it also helps avoid it looking just flat. Because if you can imagine if this guy was all just red, even with highlighting and shading, because it's just one big slab of colour, it's just going to look monotone and flat, and it's just not gonna, going to really have any interest to it. But all these little things that you can pick out, like the fingernails, the armour, the hair, um, all those little things like that, add visual interest, but they bust up those big sections of colour. Um, and so, yeah, when I sort of first started painting, um, I often sort of thought that there was something missing. Um, they're just, um, yeah, it, my, my minis were just looking a bit flat. What I worked out was that I wasn't picking out enough of these things to help bust some of the colours up. I mean, there were, there were lots of other reasons as well, but um, this was one of them. I wasn't taking advantage of the things that I could paint to bust up the colour and just add a bit of extra visual interest. So whether it's belts, bracelets, necklaces, whatever, all those sorts of things that you can just paint to divide some colour, get rid of those big slabs, um, yeah, really helps to just add some visual interest and just, yeah, um, bust it up a little bit. So that's definitely something that I can recommend to have a, have a look at. Um, if you're thinking your minis are missing something or if they are just looking a bit flat, just think about whether you're picking out all of those little bits that you can. Even sometimes you might create something and you might just do some line work or something like that just to add an extra colour in to bust up those bigger sections of colour um, because, yeah, they can become quite overpowering and they do unfortunately look quite flat even with highlighting and shading because it is just so much of one colour. Alright, so here I'm painting the eye and like I said back at the start of the video, this was one of the areas that I was really, really happy with, with the effect that I got. Um, I did deviate a bit from the artwork here um, to do the effects that I did, um, because in the artwork, all the artwork for Inferno is quite cartoony, lots of bright colours, all that sort of stuff, um, and there's not really any blood or anything like that. But because we've got this eyeball here that's been pierced on this staff, this guy looks, you know, um, he almost kind of reminds me a bit of the like the Butcher from Diablo, if you ever played that, just kind of that look on his face. Um, I, I see him being a bit like sadistic or something like that. So I wanted to reflect that with this eyeball. So in the artwork, um, just around, if you sort of imagine a ring running around the edge of the eye, um, where the, the iris isn't, it's just kind of darkened off a bit there to give it a bit of um, form just to show that it's a sphere. What I wanted to do was, so I, um, yeah, bloody it up a little bit because, um, yeah, just to really kind of give the impression that this eyeball has just been plucked from, from some creature and just stabbed onto this, onto this sphere. So I've made it bloodshot on each side. Um, but then what I come back and do is um, I do a rust effect. Oh, here's the start of the rust effect there with the typhus corrosion. I then come back with the riser rust and just dry brush that on there to give it a rusty look. So, um, you know, even to add to the, to the gruesomeness of it that he didn't even pick a new spear um, or trident, sorry. Um, it's just, he's just grabbed a rusty old one, jam this eyeball on there. Um, but then I get uh, blood for the blood god. 
and bloody it up. So um, yeah, sort of concentrated around the joins where the spikes are coming out of the out of the eyeball, where I figured the blood would be oozing out of the eyeball and then running down, and then I painted it down onto his hand as well, and then running down the the handle, um, and then lots up on those spikes as well. Um, and I've I think there were the the two things that um, I liked about it in the end is the rust effect that I did get. This is my second or third time using riser rust. The first two times it just didn't work really well. Um, I don't, I, I, I think just, um, I, I wasn't getting the right amount on the brush, I suppose, when I was dry brushing and it might've been a little too wet maybe and I just kind of smeared a little bit rather than giving that gritty texture kind of look. So I was much, much happier with that. But then also the blood pattern, I suppose you'd call it, that I managed to get. I, I do think it looks natural or the way that it would. Um, and so I think they just work well together to, to give the effect that I was after. So yeah, so this is a big deviation from the artwork. It's not cartoony, it is bloody and gory, but um, I was just trying to think of how this guy would actually be. And yeah, he really just sort of reminded me of the butcher from Diablo. Um, and I just tried to sort of reflect that a little bit more, just trying to bring his character out a little bit. And um, yeah, so that's sort of how I went about doing that. And I was, I was happy with the effect that I got. Alright, so here we're getting into the first step of basing, um, and I'm just laying down a lava foundation um, because then I put um, a ghrelin earth over the top so that that'll crack, and then I paint that black to look like volcanic rock. The, um, the mistake that I keep making, and every time I go to do this I think I've gotten it right, is I don't have enough of the yellow because when the agrelin earth goes on, it cracks unpredictably. Um, I mean, it cracks across the whole thing, but you don't know where the big cracks and the small cracks are going to be. And so what I, basically my approach is um, to just get some yellow and orange in as many spots as possible, because I need that um, variation of color to come through in the cracks to sell the impression that it's that it is actually lava and it has hot spots and cool spots and because you don't know where those cracks are going to be um you don't know which um bits of yellow and orange are actually going to show through but again here i didn't do enough yellow and so bits and pieces come through here and there but not enough and so yeah really next time i'm going to be really mindful of just putting it everywhere um and just having a bit of red here, a bit of orange there, a bit of yellow there, but consistently across the whole thing so that more of that yellow is going to come through and help to sell that look a little bit more because, yeah, you only get, really get the lava effect coming through depending on which angle you look at it from. So, yeah, that's definitely something for me to think about in the future, getting more blobs of yellow around so that it, there's more guarantee of more of it coming through because without more of that contrast of color coming through in more spots, it just doesn't sell the look as much.
Alright, so painting the skulls here, this is the last section to go on, so these are just going to get glued on, and so Belial is finished. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. As I always say, I really, really hope you've gotten something out of this video that you can use in your own painting, or you've just enjoyed watching me paint. And please do leave a comment down below, something that you liked about the video, and something that you think can be improved. I am making changes along the way, um, and using your feedback to help with that. Um, also do like and subscribe to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. We do have some Kickstarters coming in the next couple of months, so there will be lots of new games coming up on here. And make sure you do stop by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts that I've set up for this channel if you haven't yet, where I'm regularly posting images, especially on Instagram, of what I'm painting at the time, so you know what's going to be coming out in the near future. So with all that, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.